We're going to look at a Z80 based computer, kind of late 1970s, early 80s style, um, but it's been knocked up on a breadboard for a bit of fun. This is probably halfway between a ZX81 and a Spectrum in terms of power and speed, etc. So, in theory, you could actually wire this up to a Spectrum peripherals and run a Sinclair printer or, or whatever from it. So, can we see Manic Miner at some point in the future? On a, on a, on a screen like this? Not, not for a little while. Main board is here. There's the Z80 CPU. There's an 8K EEPROM running Microsoft Basic, 32K of RAM. The clock in the centre there, the crystal for the clock, along with a few logic chips to select the appropriate memory stuff. Reset button on the end. Input output serial chip that talks down to effectively an Arduino that runs the display and the keyboard. And then we've got some input output chips for the dip switches, little LED seven segment display and a bar graph display. It's all made from wires pushed into a breadboard, as you can see. I just wanted to play about with something old school. Um, al almost everything there has been donations to the Nottingham Hack Space. So it's been a case of rummaging around, see what you can find. It's like, oh, Z80 CPU. In that case, I'll base this on Z80. So yeah, the, with the, the donations and spare bits knocking about, that's, that's pretty much what it is. You can run any program which you can write in BASIC, you can run on it, as well as reading input switches, setting LED outputs, which in theory you could then use that to run relays, read bigger switches, control motors or whatever. Um, obviously you've got the keyboard input and the little display. It'd be nice to have something a bit larger, but that, that could be next stage. There's a little program which I've written already. Anyone which is familiar with BASIC will understand all of that. So. If we run that, all it's doing is counting up in binary on those two little displays there. This one is a lot brighter than that one. Uh, I can make this one dimmer, I can't make that one brighter. It's a program which will count in binary on the bar graph display on the right, as well as increment numbers on the other one. In the binary base 2 you've got the 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64 and 1, 2, 8 lights. So each, each one of those lights up represents that number. It is actually a 10 digit bar graph and we've only got eight digits of data so so ignore the two that aren't coming on and they won't ever come on. So once they're all full the program will end yeah? That's it there okay. you go. All right so and tell, talk us through how did that look in terms of basics should we have a look at the code itself? There's the first four lines and then last couple just a couple of next at the end. The program I've written on the Arduino controlling the screen is very rough and ready uh, it could be a lot more efficient but it's not it, it does the job. The biggest amount of resources was trawling through the internet to try and find enough information to build this. Uh, there's, a, there's a great website by Grant Searle which has got uh, some schematics on it which are a great help. It's also got the uh, EEPROM with Microsoft basic information as well. So the link will be down here somewhere. <laughs> it was pretty much built up over the Christmas break. Uh, a few bits of tinkering, a few bits of adding and tweaking. Um, so yes, yeah, so a few weeks work but I've learned so much doing it, that's, that's the key. That to me looks like a pretty complicated thing. It's colour coded to, to a reasonable extent. The red wires and the purple wires is basically your know, positive and your ground. So that's power, yeah? Yeah. So All of the green wires are the address bus. So the CPU address bus goes off to the RAM, off to the ROM. A bit of the address bus goes off to the uh, communication chip. There's 16 lines of the address bus, which means that the, the the CPU can address up to 64K of memory. So every, every byte of that memory has got a unique address within those 16 lines. You've also got the data bus, which is all the orange wires. So the orange wires, again, goes from the CPU to the ROM to the RAM, communication chip. Data bus also comes down to the I.O. chips as well. So that's carrying the data either from the CPU to memory or from the CPU to the I.O. chips or back the other way. So it's, it's a 8-bit controller, 8-bit eight, eight micro, um, as opposed to your modern computers which are your 32-bit, 64-bit ones. There's no hard storage on this, so but once the power goes, your program's gone, so you've got to, got to type it all in again from scratch. Um, yeah, fa fairly quick to type in, as long as it's a short, short program, but I've not attempted anything more than about 70 or 80 lines yet. So yes, there's limitations. Uh, yeah, but based on the bits I was able to find, the bar graph display is very, very dim, Conversely, the seven segment LED is very, very bright. We've had to turn out the lights to uh, to be able to see that. Do you know what all these different bits came from? So for instance, the LCD screen at the bottom there that you're using. The uh, LCD screen is one of the few bits that I bought on eBay. The communication chip I bought as well. Um, 
which was the most expensive bit. That, 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 that was about six pound for the first one, which I then blew up. So the only one which I had to buy, I then had to buy a second one of it. This is the uh, schematic of the computer here. In the middle here, we've got the uh, Z80 CPU that's connected via the address bus round to the RAM and to the ROM. This line going round here, which is the green wires. We've got the Microsoft Basic on the ROM there. Also connects round to the serial controller. You've got the data bus that goes round to the RAM and the ROM. So you've got the 8K ROM with Microsoft Basic on it. I'm using a 32K RAM chip because that's what I had handy. Uh, it goes round to the communication chip up there. The logic chips as well, which select the right addresses on the, uh, the ROM and RAM, so it knows where it's talking to and from. And a little timing circuit over there, which runs the clock for it. What's the next stage for this? The keyboard and display are quite, quite modern by comparison to everything else. So I want to go a bit more old school and retro on those. Uh, I've, got, I've got, a, got a bigger display, which I should be able to see a, a little bit more on that when that's hopefully working. And an old school Sinclair Spectrum Plus 2A keyboard. This is probably halfway between a ZX81 and a Spectrum in terms of power and, and speed, etc. If I could get that talking directly to the memory, that'll cut out the Arduino side of things, which is a clutch. And could anybody do this, do you think? If you can use Google, you can find the information and you can build this yourself. And you can put, I know you've obviously had these kind of, some of these have been donated parts and stuff, but are these things you can still get hold of? Oh yes, they are expensive. Old computers are the best source for these bits and pieces, but yeah, any old electronics or eBay, anywhere, yeah.